Ladies and gentlemen, it's a huge pleasure to be uh, helping to present these awards once again. I am in charge for the next hour, which for a leader of the Conservative Party is about average, as you will have gathered by now. Um, um, most years, in uh, previous years, we've had the Chancellor of the Exchequer himself here to congratulate everybody on winning, but tonight I'm representing all sides of politics. It's been decided that one politician who will stop at nothing to get Tony Blair out of 10 Downing Street is quite sufficient for these awards. Uh, I, want to, uh, I want to congratulate Digby Jones on his handling of the, uh, the hecklers and everything else at uh, this week's CBI conference. It could have been worse, I have to tell him. It could have been like the time Lady Astor was giving a speech in which she said, I would rather commit adultery than let a drop of alcohol pass my lips. And someone at the back shouted out, well, who wouldn't? Uh, it, it could have been like the time at the Labour Party conference uh, 30 years ago where a uh, minister was asked what he'd achieved, and they said, we've achieved a lot. We've driven prostitution off the streets and underground. And someone shouted, well, that's it, pandering to the bleeding miners again. And... We, uh, I enjoyed his stories about Winston Churchill. I think his bigger insult of Clement Attlee, rather than the uh, lavatory incident, although that's a good one, is when he recalled that he said an empty taxi drew up outside in Downing Street and Attlee got out. Uh, that was one of his. Um, <laughs> that was one of his great insults. But he knew how to. He knew how to take the big scandals in his stride. We could have done with him today. He once exclaimed. Uh, when told of an impending scandal in his government about an incident not far from here in Hyde Park, he exclaimed, one of my ministers caught half naked with a guardsman in Hyde Park last Wednesday on the coldest night of the year. Then he apparently said, makes you proud to be British, doesn't it? <laughs> and you do have to think, you do have to think that scandals are not what they used to be. Uh, you know, there used to be George Brown, the foreign secretary in the 1960s. Uh, he used to love a drink. Uh, and he, his general view was you were not drunk if you could lie on the floor without holding on to it. Uh, he set off on a, an RAF plane on an official visit to South America. Ten-hour journey. Had a gin and tonic, another gin and tonic, whiskey, another whiskey, glass of port, glass of beer, or everything. Ten hours later, the plane lands in South America. Some music was playing. He did a little dance on the tarmac when it landed. Uh, there was a figure in a long red dress just across the runway. He went up and did a dance with the figure in the long red dress. It was only when they got him to the British Embassy and sobered him up the next morning, they were able to explain to him the music he'd been dancing to was the Peruvian national anthem. And the figure in the long red dress had been the Cardinal Archbishop of Lima. <laughs> And he was our foreign secretary in the 1960s. And we have, you know, we've, we've all had our difficulties. We've had uh, this um, row in the Conservative Party recently over who has taken drugs. Uh, the best answer to this came from Boris Johnson, no less, who, when it was reported that he had never taken drugs at university, replied, this is an outrageous slur. <laughs> He said, there are no no-go areas, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and finished it off with, uh, I was certainly given cocaine, but for all the effect it had, it might as well have been icing sugar. <laughs> and of course, no one's asked him about drugs ever since. <laughs> this is the most effective reply. Uh, it's like the great statement of the late George Best, much mourned this week, uh, who said, who recalled the time in his life when he did give up women and booze, and he said it was the worst 20 minutes of his life. <laughs> and then, of course, on the other side of politics, we've had scandals involving uh, David Blunkett, and uh, I don't know whether you know what happened, but the day he resigned, he also had to take his dog to the vet. Uh, and the vet said, do you want it neutered? And the dog said, you bet I do. <laughs> uh, and... <laughs> 